Hello, uh, my name is Brad Shelton. I work with Purdue Extension based out of Washington County, Indiana. Uh, today I'm going to spend a few minutes discussing some of the double crop opportunities uh, that uh, producers have. We're in a stand of uh, brown midrib sorghum Sudan grass, uh, a cross between uh, sorghum and Sudan grass as the name implies. Uh, this particular variety, as I mentioned, is, has the brown midrib trait. Uh, there are varieties that do not have the brown midrib trait that uh, would have a white midrib similar to corn, Johnson grass, uh, eastern gamma grass, and so on. Um, the brown midrib trait is a mutation that was discovered here at Purdue and then uh, bred into some forage type varieties. Uh, the, the brown midrib trait uh, typically uh, is an indication of uh, less lignin. Uh, increased digestibility, increased palatability. Um, sorghum Sudan grass itself was uh, typically used uh, for silage uh, just because it's such a, a uh, large stocked plant, uh, not as um, likely to be used for hay just because you've got such a large stem that needs to be split and, and dried down. Not to say that it can't be used for hay, but in most cases you know, typically it was used for silage, although with the brown midrib trait, uh, increased palatability, the animals uh, do like this product uh, more so than the normal trait. And uh, re research and demonstration plots here at Purdue have, have shown that, uh, seeded different plots and had animals grazing it, and the animals will take the brown midrib varieties literally to the ground before they even touch the normal version of the uh, sorghum sudan grass. Now, typically you're looking at probably four to five tons of dry matter per acre when you're using uh, sorghum sudan grass uh, or sudan grass uh, which uh, is also an option. They do have varieties now that have the brown midrib trait in sudan grass. Uh, these are great um, if you're going if you're an alfalfa hay crop producer uh, maybe ha also have some livestock, you know, you can't seed alfalfa back to back due to autotoxicity issues. Uh, so you can seed this after the first cutting alfalfa uh, to allow time for the, the toxin to break down in the alfalfa field and then possibly go back in the fall or, uh, you know, a year later in the spring. Uh, if you're trying to, your cow-calf operator, uh, you know, got some toxic uh, Kentucky 31 infected pastures, you're wanting to get rid of that issue. Uh, this is an option uh, called spray smother spray. Uh, spray the, the infected field with uh, you know herbicide like glyphosate. Come back in, drill the sorghum Sudan grass or Sudan grass in uh, mid-May, late May when the soil temperatures are about 70 degrees or so. Uh, graze it during the summer months and then come back in in the fall. If you have uh, fescue seedlings, fescue plants are still thriving, hit it again with the glyphosate product. And, uh, you know, if, if everything works out, you can then go back into a more desired variety, be it orchard grass or a new and improved uh, fescue variety. Uh, concern with the uh, sorghum Sudan grass and the Sudan grass, two concerns. Uh, one being prussic acid poisoning, the other being nitrate toxicity. Uh, both um, are, occur when you have a stressed plant. Um, the, Prussic acid is highest. It's the kind of a cyanide type compound, uh, highest levels in young, rapidly growing plants. Uh, as that plant reaches the, the height of uh, 20, you know, two feet to three feet, uh, it kind of dissipates within the plant. It's diluted. The, the plant is then safe uh, to graze. Uh, any, anything that stresses, I mentioned, anything that stresses that plant, be it drought or killing frost, is where we see it, you know, most often. Uh, after a killing frost, you want to wait a week to uh, 10 days or so, allow that prussic acid to dissipate, and uh, then you can put the animals back out in the paddock or out in the field uh, as long as you don't have any um, tillers that are actively trying to grow. Then you, you have to, to let them, you know, another killing frost or so, and uh, then you can turn the animals back out. Uh, nitrate toxicity. Basically, uh, as well as you know, a stressed plant, usually due to a dry spell followed by a uh, kind of a drought ending rain, the plant will, will take up a large amount of nitrogen all at once. Uh, it takes time for that, that nitrate to be um, 
broken down and metabolized, so you want to wait a week or so after a drought ending rain um, to uh, allow that to dissipate before turning the animals back out. Uh, cold snaps, a cool spell in the summer or an area around the paddock that's in the shade. So that plant is not actively growing. You can build up nitrate issues in that as well. Um, anytime you were to, uh, to green chop, you want to get that green chop fed immediately. You don't want to let it sit overnight. The, the nitrates will convert to nitrites, uh, which is about 10 times as more toxic. So you can have issues uh, in that case as well. Here we have a comparison of the brown midrib trait versus the normal trait, and as the name implies, you can see the, uh, the difference between the brown midrib and the normal. Uh, the brown midrib is basically uh, less lignin, uh, so we have uh, greater digestibility, also increases the palatability. Um, just because a, a plant has a white midrib does not mean that it does not have the brown midrib trait, as not all mutations uh, have the characteristic brown color. So when you're purchasing seed, um, you know, take that into consideration. Uh, you won't always have that brown midrib trait. Uh, we're in a stand of pearl millet, uh, seeded July 13th, today is September the 4th, and you can see we've got some uh, decent amount of tonnage here. Uh, pearl millet is probably uh, historically maybe more used for, for grazing than uh, in siling, just because it typically has a finer stem. Uh, it rapidly, you know, rapidly grows, it's more drought tolerant, um, more grazing days in different research projects I've seen than the uh, Sudan grass and the sorghum Sudan grass. Um, it, it's not as tolerant of cool weather as uh, sorghum Sudan grass. Uh, temperatures get below 50, degree, 50 degrees in the spring after, you know, which is in the seedling stage. It's more prone to, uh, to dying than the sorghum Sudan grass would be. Uh, the sorghum Sudan grass, as I mentioned, has the uh, prussic acid potential, whereas the pearl millet does not. Uh, so that is a one positive. Uh, you do have issues with nitrate toxicity. Uh, again, nitrate toxicity, um, when, the, when a plant is stressed, uh, be it from drought, cool temperatures, being shaded, that plant cannot met, uh, metabolize the nitrate as effectively as it should. And uh, after a uh, drought ending rain or uh, if that shaded or uh, stressed plant is fed, uh, the nitrates uh, which prevent the animal from picking uh, up oxygen, putting oxygen in the blood, give you a brown color in the blood, um, can cause nitrate poisoning and uh, after a drought new rain you would want to wait about a week or so to allow that nitrate to dissipate. Uh, you can ensile uh, 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 pearl millet and uh, you know, do away with the nitrate poisoning. Uh, typically ensiling will reduce the nitrate uh, concentration by about 50%. Uh, Haying will have no effect. Uh, it will not reduce the amount of nitrate at all. Um, you, you can raise your cutter bar height uh, if you need to get in and, and harvest, um, but uh, best if, you, if you're grazing just to let the, uh, you know, let the week pass and then allow the animal to graze it. Uh, in conclusion, uh, these summer annuals like pearl millet, Sudan grass, brown midrib, sorghum Sudan grass and such is a great option. You know, if you're, if you're running short on hay, you, you uh, think we may have a, a, drier, a drier summer you're fighting the summer slump. Um, they'll provide tonnage, they'll provide grazing days, sometimes they'll provide higher quality feed, uh, you know, better than some of the fescue and things we have in our pastures.